Welcome, I'm Tom Steffen with Gould's Water Technology, and today we're going to talk about duplex sewage panels, particularly the D120. So we're going to talk about wiring and troubleshooting with this panel. So a really important document that we have is the technical brochure uh, for this style panel here. And we find a lot of questions are, you know, have to do with, with wiring and a lot of these footnotes. So very important document and we're going to cover some of the important footnotes here where if there is an issue, a lot of those issues lie in this area here. I think one important thing is if we look at this document, you know, it is a wiring diagram, but it is not laid out exactly like when we look at the panel. And I think sometimes that leads to some confusion. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. So let's talk about some of these footnotes here and um, sort of begin the troubleshooting process. So the first note there is for 120 volt operation. So if we look at that on the wiring diagram, the note says for 120 volt operation, use terminals L1 and N. So we're talking about this area here. And then it says jump terminals N and L2. So if our panel isn't working, it could be because we don't have a neutral, whether that's with 115 and we didn't put a jumper in, or with 230, let's say, because with 230, if you just have two hots and a ground, then it's not going to work because we need two hots, a neutral, and a ground. So this panel has to have a neutral. The other footnote that sometimes causes confusion is its footnote one labeled on the wiring diagram and it's for a separate 120 volt supply. So um, sometimes the code says we have to have separate power supply to the panel itself, right? Separate from the main supply that we just talked about. But so the footnote says for separate 120 volt power supply, remove jumper J1 from terminals H and L1. So what we're talking about is here. So we're talking about this jumper here. And so the confusion is sometimes we think that is referring to our main supply uh, that we just referred to. So for separate 120 volt supply, uh, we have to remove jumper J1 from terminals H, so H and L1, that's this jumper right here, and connect a 15 amp max protected 120 volt supply to L1 and N, right? So L1 and N. So again, that is only for a separate 120 volt supply in addition to the main power supply that we have. So why would we want to do that? Well, one of the nice things that it does is, um, so if back here we trip a, a breaker, then that means we have no power to the panel, so we've got no alarm, no buzzer, no horn, so I don't really know that there's a problem if this main breaker uh, has tripped on the main supply. All right, so that is footnote number one. Footnote number two has to do with a wide angle float switch. Footnote number three has to do with the switches down here. And so, so we'll cover that when we get to the switches. Step one, we talked about really wiring issues. So we're gonna pull out this wiring diagram and make sure that we have our jumpers in place and certainly a, a neutral. Step two is following the voltage. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna power up the panel and then we're just gonna follow the voltage. Before we do that, we're gonna check our 
control, make sure our control power is on. So we always want to check that. Uh, so we can leave these off for now. So, but we do have the, the control switch on. And so we're just going to make sure that we have power coming in. So I've got my meter here set to AC voltage. And I do have power to this panel. And so I'm going to go to, remember we have 120 coming in. And I just want to make sure that I have the correct amount of voltage which is, you know, plus or minus 10% of the nameplate. So one of the things that we see on this meter here is, you know, we have, you know, real power, right? So we've got real power, we've got 124 AC volts. So, so that's good. So next, we're just gonna follow that power up. We can see that it goes on the top side of the circuit breaker. So we're just going to follow that panel. So again, we have 124 volts going up to the top of the circuit breaker. So circuit breakers, you know, these we'll leave these on, right? So next is, is the power going through the circuit breaker. So we're just going to follow that power down. Again, we got 124 volts again. And you'd want to check both sides. We're just going to do one side. Now it goes to the magnetic contactor. All right, so we're going to read the voltage on top of that. So we've got 124 volts again. So again, this is a, a contactor, so when the coil is energized, the two wings here, uh, that closes that contact. And if the contact's open, like it is now, we shouldn't have any voltage, right? When that contact closes, then we would see that same voltage go through that switch, that contact. Right? So from there, it goes to T1 and T2. Again, right now that contact's open. And so here's one thing that is a little... Um, difficult sometimes with your digital meter. Um, we can see we don't have that lightning bolt. We really don't have any real power, right? Because that contact is open. Uh, it's showing something, but it's really now millivolt scale. But again, if that contact were closed, then that power should flow and we should see that same voltage uh, to the pump itself. Step three is really your float switches. We're going to simulate the float switches that are in the tank, right? We're going to, we're going to use these switches here. You can also use jumpers if you want. Uh, but just for the purpose of the video, we're going, to, we're going to, you know, simulate disconnecting all of our floats. And then we're just going to use these switches here for our floats. And they're all labeled off, on, lag, and high level. And that's how they're wired. So this is the off float, that's the lowest float, the on is the brown, the leg is the purple, and then the high level float, which is the highest float, is the red. One thing we have to do is we've got to make sure the control switch is on, and also our HOA switches are set to auto, right? So handoff auto. Auto basically means that it's going to automatically work based on your float switches. So we've got those set properly. The alternator, which is right here, make sure that's in the middle, uh, set to alternation. So now what we're gonna do is we've got power applied, the power is turned on, and then we're gonna simulate those float switches. So the lowest float is the off float, and the water level rises and turns that on basically, closes those contacts, which again, you can use a jumper. So other than the light going on, the off LED, then nothing else happens, which is what it's supposed to do. So the water keeps rising, it gets to the second float, which is the on float. LED turns on, contactor pulls in, we can hear that, right? and we can see that pump two is running. So light is on, 
pump two is running. Okay, so let's say in this case pump two um, does its job. The tank is emptying. This float is going to close first. And notice what happens. The LED light goes off, but the pump is still running. All right? So it continues to pump it down, and then it gets to the first float, which is the off float, turns the light off, and after a delay, it turns the pump off. So, so far, so good. Uh, let's do that sequence again because we're, we have an alternating system, and we should see the other pump automatically turn on because it alternates. So let's go through that system again. Off float first, light is on, nothing is happening. On float, light is on. Should be this pump here, contactor pulls in. Pump one is now running, right? Does its job. On float opens up then the off float, and then it turns it off after a delay. So, so far so good with our alternation, our LEDs, our pump running. So the next scenario is, let's say that the on float does not keep up with the demand, right? Water level still rising, it gets to the lag float. So we'll go through that scenario. Off float, just the light, nothing else. On float, the light alternates now, right? So just to see which one is on, pump two is on, All right? But again, let's say that doesn't keep up. Water level's rising, gets to the lag float. Lag float, light comes on, turns the second pump on, so now we've got two pumps running, we can see here. All right, and let's say that, okay, that does its job. So now water level is going down. Notice that both pumps are still on. Keeps going down, the on float is now open. Both pumps are still running. We can see here, all right? gets all the way down to the last float, first float, which is the off float. Only until then does it turn both pumps off. So far, so good, right? Um, one last scenario is lag pump does not keep up and it gets to the high level float. So it's gonna get a little noisy. The alarm should come on, the buzzer should come on and so let's go through that one last scenario. Off float, nothing happens other than the light. On float, it's alternating again. All right, so pump one is on, can't keep up, gets to the lag float, light goes on, contactor pulls in, we've got two pumps running. So in this scenario, the pump still can't keep up, all right? So let's close this for a minute so we can see. And now the high level alarm. Light is on, alarm is on. Let's just silence that, all right? And then reset it. Okay, so now we got everything on. Again, so we're gonna go Backwards now, that high level opens up. The lag float opens up. Still have both pumps running. The on float, both pumps are still on. And then they won't turn off until it gets to the off float. So that is a typical four float system. And so if we're still having issues, then that means that there are issues with the floats in the basin uh, because everything else is, is working out here and the, and the switches are working uh, like they're supposed to work. So, you know, a couple other things to look at. We can run the pumps um, manually and that is the hand. 
So we can just double check that way. So you can hear the contactor pulling in and this pump is on. So we'll check pump two manually or hand. Contactor pulls in and we can check and see if that pump is, is running. So we can see if it's running uh, by hand or manual. The other feature that this box has is the alternator. So in um, normal applications, we want to leave that switch in the middle, which is set to alternate. The two options that you have other than that are move it up to pump one and move it down to pump two. So uh, we'll show you sort of how it works. So let's say that we move it up to pump one. It's basically saying that I've pulled pump two out and it's out for repair. So I only want this thing to call for pump one. So let's just take a look at that. So I've got it set to pump one and go through our scenario again. Off float, on float. All right, let's double check. You can hear it, but pump one is running. All right. And so really the test of that is to do another cycle and just to make sure that it doesn't call for pump two. So we'll do that again. All right, so there's a little delay, opens up, nothing's running right now. So we're gonna do that again. After a delay, it's gonna turn the pump on and notice it did not alternate and it stays with pump one. So that's the purpose of the alternator, something else that we should check and make sure that our switch is set for alternate. You know, both pumps are working fine. Thanks for watching our video today. For additional information, go to Goulds.com.